Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, as this title on this video suggests, we're going to be discussing things to think about when moving abroad. Um, I'm doing this from the context of having lived in Thailand for 10 years. Um, those who watch this video, there's probably some things in here that could be of interest to somebody moving to Spain from the United States or to Chile from the UK. Um, it's not specific to Thailand, and frankly, every once in a while, I like to do a video where I'm a little less sort of constrained by the narrowness of the topic I get into. Um, I just, I've seen a lot of folks move abroad over the years. I've seen a lot have tremendous success in doing so, and I've seen a fair amount who've not been so, so successful. And I just thought I'd kind of, you know, for lack of a better word, pontificate on what I've seen works and what I've seen doesn't and what I think folks need to probably be aware of uh, before moving someplace else. Uh, obviously the first one is the language. Um, I do see a lot of people uh, that move to Thailand and sort of assume the Thais should just know a lot of English and you know frankly it's not called England, it's called Thailand and they speak Thai in Thailand and frankly due to their history and, and uh, the very sort of um, somewhat insular nature of their culture, uh, they, they're not as uh, adept at English as certain other uh, jurisdictions here in Southeast Asia and throughout the world. Um, in many cases, your average Thai doesn't have to be particularly proficient in English. They can go their whole life uh, knowing very little English and can lead a, a perfectly, perfectly fine life for that matter. So I, I often find at least ex expats or prospective expats who come down here to Thailand um, they often sort of think that, you know, they can kind of get by without knowing a lot of Thai. And look, my Thai is functional at best, but at least I can get my point across when I'm talking to people and have at least a superficial discussion, uh, get around in a taxi, buy food, etc. Um, I first lived in Korea, and frankly, the Thais are so accommodating, and I'm not saying the Koreans are cold or something, but... Uh, in Korea, they just did not help with your language at all. They sort of just said, you know, I, I just kind of felt like the first few days there, I, I only ate like one kind of food because I didn't know how to order anything else. And it was, it was a difficult experience. But I learned Korean quite quickly. Again, the Thais are rather accommodating people um, on a personal level. And I do feel like there's a lot of folks that move at least to Thailand and sort of assume that the Thais should sort of accommodate them. And... I think that's a bad assumption to make. Uh, another thing that I see a lot of Farang or foreigners here in Thailand get kind of hamstrung on is banking. Um, banking, especially in the past 10 years, the details and logistics of getting a, a personal bank, just a personal bank account set up in Thailand, it's gotten more difficult over time. Um, and you know, they, they've made restrictions on it for those that don't have work permits or long-term non-immigrant visa, like a retirement visa here in the kingdom. And they've basically, you know, it's, it's tough uh, to get a bank account set up. And I've seen, perhaps not expats so much, but tourists who kind of are on the verge of maybe going down the expat road, take, make really wild assumptions with respect to how banking should operate uh, the Thai banking system, it's very paper intensive uh, compared to, say, the American system or I'm sure the European or British systems uh, of banking. Um, it's, it can be very slow. Uh, we went, I had a member of my staff today go get a bank draft for use in the United States, and it took her like two or three hours at the bank to get it issued. And we're not talking about a substantial sum of money. It was a few hundred dollars, you know, that we needed to get this done for. And it just, it's sort of the nature of the beast. Um, Making assumptions about how the banking system works in the kingdom is probably not the best idea. I suspect making similar assumptions about other jurisdictions is not the best idea. Now, different countries, you're going to be talking about a different level of difficulty associated with banking. I suspect if you move from the U.S. to Australia, it's probably not the, the hardest thing in the world to get a bank account. Finally, maybe not finally, but just moving forward on that notion, there's also a communication issue, and this isn't specifically on language. It's almost a sort of a cultural disconnect 
uh, that I see a lot of expats trying to make their way here in Thailand have real problems overcoming. And in fact, I've talked with other long-term expats about how there is a type of relatively long-term expat that hits about the seven-year mark. It sort of hits a wall. They just can't take, uh, it's at least with Thailand, living in Thailand much longer. Um, and a lot of it, I think, comes from this sort of cultural disconnect. It's walking into a bank, for example, having done business at that bank for years, and then out of nowhere, they want some new document, you know, and it just pops up out of nowhere. Um, and just, I, I actually had a client once who just, who got very upset that that exact scenario happened. He'd been banking in the same place for years. They, they wanted some other document for him to, I think it was withdrawal funds, and he just sort of snapped, got on a plane, left the country, and never came back. Told me to pack up his stuff and send it to him. Um, was that the right thing? I think for him it probably was. I think he had hit his wits in with the system. Um, but the thing I'm trying to get across with this video and with this specific topic on sort of the cultural disconnect, those looking to move here really should understand that there are going to be those moments. And it's easier said than done to prepare for them and sort of keep your cool when they come up. It's, e it's easier said than done to do that. Um, I myself have lost my temper many times because just the sheer sort of the seeming absurdity of a given regulation or something just was too much for me to bear and I just, I just sort of lost it. But that being said, that's not a good way to deal with things and in the long term, you have to kind of take an attitude of just okay, you know, everything's going to be all right. I suspect that this is very similar in other jurisdictions. It's not just a Thailand uh, issue. You know, I'm sure if you move to South America somewhere, there's probably jurisdictions in South America that have very similar circumstances. I've talked to people who live in Italy and, and they say, yeah, actually, there's certain aspects of dealing with like the Thai government that is very similar to dealing with certain aspects of the Italian government. I'm not trying to point out one specific jurisdiction. I'm just trying to provide a little bit of a conceptual framework for those who are really serious about moving abroad. Maybe I should say Americans specifically moving abroad uh, because getting outside of your comfort zone, although it can be very much an adventure, at the same time, it can result in some kind of some ill will and some wasted resources and time and a lot of frustration. If you're unable to sort of enter the phase of your life that you're going into and being an expat, um, if you're unable to enter it without at least taking stock and trying to understand what you're getting into before you get into it.